Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing up the Madden cheese as always. Got another Madden 21 uh, preview video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the top five teams that I think would be best to avoid if you're picking a team either in CFM or in uh, regular game modes, in regs. So if you're playing a game of regs online or CFM, these are going to be the teams that are probably going to be the hardest to win with. I mean, I personally think if you're a good enough player, you can build any one of these rosters. You can win with any one of these teams. Uh, but you want an advantage, a competitive advantage to try to either win your league Super Bowl or just you know get ranked as high as you can in regs modes these are gonna be the teams that are gonna make it the hardest to do so starting off we have the Washington team I can't say their name I might get sued but ultimately the Washington NFL logos um, is, is the first team on my list and this is what I mean when I say it's one of the hardest lists to make because I think that the Washington team has one of the best defenses in this game and I'm just going to go like I said I'm going to go over the strengths because like I said ultimately I see more positives than negatives uh, I mean when it comes to the defensive line the front seven especially they are loaded I don't even know how Matt Ioannidis has the highest rating on here but when you look at the defensive line Deron Payne first round pick Jonathan Allen, first round pick. Jace, uh, Jace, Chase Young, who was the f number two pick this last season. Montez Sweat. I mean, the guy had eight sacks last year. He's a 91 speed player, but for some reason, he's only a 76 overall. I don't understand that. But you can see the talent. They have like five, six first round picks in the front seven. I don't even see uh, the linebacker, Ruben Foster. Right there he is. He's a better player than that. That's actually surprising. They, they kind of undercut some of these guys' ratings. And then you can see Kendall Fuller is the highest rated defensive player. Their secondary is pretty nice, too. Their safety tank him a fuller and landon collins who's a really good box safety uh they really you know to me they have a lot of talent but their offense is so bad it's going to be very difficult to uh, to put up a lot of points so that's going to be your biggest issue if you look at the offensive side their offensive line they just trade away the best offensive linemen uh this the offensive line for years with a strength now it's just kind of average but the real issue is their weapons darius guys i mean they gave him a pretty generous rating of an 81 they have pretty decent running backs between him and Adrian peterson who's just 100 years old at this point uh but the receiving core the tight ends their tight ends i mean who, what's their highest rated tight end? i probably gotta go all the way to the bottom here to even find a tight end who's not even on the list uh and then you go to the receivers other than terry mclaurin you really don't have anything now terry mclaurin's a beast but that's it i mean you have one guy and then you have to look a bunch at a, just a bunch of names and then their quarterback isn't really a, in a good situation either with dwayne haskins the next team i have on my list is the uh the dolphins now the dolphins were also on my most improved list uh but they still have some of the same issues that a lot of the teams i'm going to mention today have uh, number one is their offensive line is a problem. I mean, they really don't have... When your highest rated offensive lineman is Eric Flowers, who was a guy that essentially got ran out of the league at some point. I mean, he was an embarrassment when he was a first-round pick for the Giants, and now he's the best lineman on the Dolphins. That's a problem. So you're going to have to build your entire offensive line. They do have some good players, like Devontae Parker is a prototype. I think he's a really underrated receiver in the league. He's probably going to continue to grow. Jordan Howard and Matt Breda, they both brought in this year. Those guys can be your franchise backs for a couple of seasons, without a doubt. Very good running backs. Thunder and lightning type of combo. Then you have Mike Gusecki, who is one of the best, you know, a physically talented uh, tight end. Six foot seven, six foot eight, 83 speed. Another really good uh, prototype type player. They definitely have some good weapons. Tua is on the way. He's there to save the day. Listen to what I say. How about I just go eat some hay? I can make things out of clay and lay by the bay. I just may. What do you say? But ultimately, that's another guy. I mean, if you pick this in a regular game mode, he's not going to help you out much first year. The biggest strength of this team, though, without a doubt, is probably their cornerbacks and maybe, you know, their secondary as a whole. With Byron Jones coming over and Xavier Howard, they're going to have a really good cornerback tandem. That's one of the things I'm really excited about this team. But after that, their front seven really struggles. Um, they don't really have any real pass rushers at all. There's not a lot of guys. You're going to have to replace most of your stars on defense. Next up, we got the Bengals. Here's another team that is you know like i said they have some teams have a lot of weapons but they don't have the meat and the potatoes where they need it and that's what's going to be the Bengals' biggest problem they have a lot of weapons joe mixon obviously tops the board aj green i mean he doesn't really play a lot in real life but in madden i'm pretty sure he's healthy uh tyler board came on last year john ross is a guy 96 speed actually started to show a little bit of life last year then he got hurt again uh but ultimately 96 speed another young guy you have a three wide receiver set right there that you could you could rock for several years in a cfm or 
used right away in a regs game. And then you also have they drafted T. Higgins, who's a six foot three, six foot four young receiver. So you have four receivers. I mean, if you're in a CFM, you can trade one of those guys. Maybe trade AJ Green, get the most you can out of him, build these other guys up. So there's definitely talent as far as weapons go on a roster like this, especially on offense. Joe Burrow, the number one pick, should have a lot of success over the long run of a of a uh, CFM. But the biggest issue is once again the line with with as bad as Madden blocking is. Just imagine going to a game with a bunch of linemen that are all under 70. I mean, that's basically what you're looking at here. Your center, your left guard, all of them. They don't really have a tight end anymore either. And then on the defensive side, they made some pretty good adjustments and pretty good improvements in the offseason. They almost made my list of uh, most improved teams. I really thought about doing it. Uh, they brought, I mean, they have Geno Atkins, who's always a good player. They brought in DJ Reed, a really underrated defensive tackle from the uh, the Houston uh, Texans. Uh, very good player. As you can see, their, their top three guys are all defensive linemen. Then you go to the secondary, and that's where all the rest of these guys come in. William Jackson the third is definitely a good cornerback. Uh, you have him, Jesse Bates, Von Bell, a free agent they brought in. Trey Waynes, a free agent they brought in. A speed guy they brought in. 93 speed, even though he's not a great corner. When you have guys with speed, that's a lot of times that's all that really matters. Then they also brought in a slot corner, Mackenzie Alexander. So their secondary is definitely strong. Their linebackers are a little bit on the weak side. They drafted a guy thinking like the third round who's going to be on the roster here. But ultimately, I mean, like I said, I mean, the biggest issue with this team, you got to grow some of these younger players in the CFM. You definitely have a lot of horses, but when you have to replace your entire offensive line in a game with horrible blocking, uh, that's probably going to be the biggest issue. Next up, we got the Giants. Now, here's another team where one side of the ball looks pretty good, uh, but the other side of the ball has got some problems. So on the offensive side, I mean, I like what I'm seeing. They have some line. They've really improved their line over the years uh, with bringing in guys like Zietler and Will Hernandez. That was always one of their biggest issues. Um, so they improved there. But weaponry is really where they're going to shine, I think, in the future. Uh, I mean, Saquon Barkley, Evan Ingram, Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton. That's all you need. You got all the guys you need to make a really good offense. You got speed. You got everything you know what i mean this is this is a team that has a lot of potential when it comes to that uh Daniel Jones is a pretty decent prospect at quarterback, too. The big problem on a team like this is definitely the defense. Like I said, one side of the ball is looking pretty good. The other side is really looking bad, especially when it comes to the front seven. They don't really have anybody that can get pressure on their own. Uh, a couple of good guys, though. I mean, they're Leonard Williams and Dalvin Tomlinson and Dexter Lawrence, first-round pick from last year. So there's definitely talent here. But you can see, I mean, they're all pretty underdeveloped. I mean, they're all 80s or lower. Uh, the secondary brought over James Bradbury and Jabril Peppers last year. And, you know, they added some guys. Uh, second round pick Xavier McKinney uh, you know what I mean they definitely have uh, a lot of young guys but man you got to work them all up DeAndre Baker didn't do anything last year and I think this is probably going to be one of the worst defenses in the game next up we got the Cardinals now this is a team that is a little bit on here based off of the division they're in. I mean, the division that they play in has some of the best teams in the game. The Seahawks, the the Niners that went to the Super Bowl last year. Even the Rams are still pretty good. All these teams are pretty much ahead of them. So if you take this team, you're really going into a powerhouse division, and you're doing it with a roster that's kind of thin. I mean, they have a couple of star players here and there, like Chandler Jones and Patrick Peterson, and Buda Baker's a good player as well. So they have some really good players on defense, but after that, it kind of falls uh, thin. And then you can see everybody on the list is pretty much in the 70s at best uh, and there's still some good players they have some good linebacker options and young guys and, and Hicks and Hassan Reddick guys that I think are probably a little bit better than the ratings uh, and then guys like Isaiah Simmons who they just brought in in the first round he's going to be a good player the secondary looks pretty solid Byron Murphy another young guy these are all guys you can work up but to start out with you're going to have problems and like I said the defensive front after Chandler Jones I mean where's the next defensive lineman all the way down at uh, 75 overall and Corey Peters I mean that's not a guy you know Devin Kennard I mean, these are guys, they're throwaways. They're not guys you can find any value in. De Devondre Campbell, all the front seven guys are pretty much guys that need to be replaced. Then you get to the offensive side, and it's kind of a facade once again. I mean, you got huge star players like DeAndre Hopkins, who they just brought over, Larry Fitzgerald, who's slow and is probably going to retire. I'd make, honestly, I'd make Larry Fitzgerald a tight end if you're in a CFM, because I don't think A3 speed is going to get it done anywhere else, and you have a lot of other options. Kenyon Drake came over, looked really good last year. He's definitely a good back. Uh, Christian Kirk, Kyler Murray, obviously a quarterback. I mean, you got speed all over this roster. I really like the Cardinals. I have a lot of gameplay uh, on my channel of me using the Cardinals from last year, and that was before they went out and got what could be the best receiver in the game in DeAndre Hopkins. But like I said, 
like a lot of other teams. Their biggest issue, their line is pretty terrible. You're lucky that you have a mobile quarterback like Kyler Murray because you're going to be running for your life. So that's that's the list. Uh, like I said, the next one, not going to be so negative. I'm either going to do uh, teams that, um, you know, best teams to build uh, in a CFM or I'm going to do just best teams overall. I also want to do sleeper teams. If you guys want to see any of those three videos, let me know in the comment section at the like button and I'll do that next. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team. Where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.